Good morning, good morning. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. For those of you that are new to our channel, there's quite a few of you out there. Um, if you haven't um, realized what we are about, my family and I live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho. And we educate on our lifestyle, wilderness survival, uh, preparedness, homesteading, and incorporate faith into that. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Chad. And every Wednesday at 10.30 Pacific Standard Time, you will find me here on Facebook Live. And then I also um, take this video and share it on our YouTube channel. I'm a little behind on that. We've been having some internet issues. But stay tuned. There will be quite a few videos hitting our YouTube channel later today. Good morning, Shelly. Good morning, Diana. Good morning, Jill. Good morning, Tammy. Oh, you guys are awesome. You must have missed me last week. That was crazy. By the way, if you guys did not get a chance to watch last week's video, I was live all by myself, and it was so lonely. You guys make such a big difference. <laughs> but if you didn't get a chance to watch it, please go back and watch it. Um, that was inspired by some things that I was um, involved in and experiencing last week, and I really felt... <laughs> I felt God stepped me tremendously out of my comfort zone to share last week. Um, I'm typically out of my comfort zone, but it's more in a physical nature and just life. But when it comes to politics and um, the societal arguments that go on, I try to stay clear of that because there's just so much um, keyboard cowboys out there. And... Um, people that hide behind the keyboard and I've often stay out of that but last week I really felt the need to share some things so if you didn't watch that because of uh, Facebook being down last week please go back and watch it that will be hitting our YouTube channel hopefully later today or tomorrow um, good morning Miss Tammy good morning Anita so glad to have you guys joining me I hope you guys are doing well I am going to real quick share the feed with two people how are you guys? What kind of prayer requests do you have? What kind of celebrations do you have to share? Somebody's got to have something to tell me. So go ahead and do that a while. We have a bit of a weird day today. It's very overcast and the temperature is just a weird temperature. I, guys come in and they're hot because they're working, but as you can see, I have a sweatshirt on. I'm cold. Okay, bear with me one second here. Here we go. There's Miss Mona, and there is Charles. Okay, so today's topic I think is a good one. Um, we are going to discuss how fear, clutter, and abundance, I didn't put that in the title, but abundance, uh, debilitate us. And we're also going to talk about um, don't wait until tomorrow. Uh, some good stuff. And I've been really blessed to find out through the last couple months how enjoyable life is when you are fully decluttered. And um, what I've learned from that needs to be shared. I see some messages here, so let me jump back. Diana says, I do my best to stay out as well, but there are times when I put my foot in it. You know, especially on Facebook, I really try to avoid it because when you look at the thread, you can just see people being there and going from one thread to the next and celebrating and high-fiving with the person that is in agreement with them and then going through and slamming the ones that don't. And, and you can't really have logical conversations when you're dealing with other people who are saying that what we're supposed to do is love one another and that um, we're, you know, we're not supposed to shove our beliefs on other people, and yet they're the ones that are so upset because we don't see the same view they do. So you really can't have a logical conversation in that regard, and that can be hard, and that's why I stay away from it. I am notoriously a lover, not a fighter. Um, I grew up in a very huge fighting and traumatic situation and somehow, by the extreme grace of God, I, the apple fell from the tree, but it rolled. I'm, I'm so blessed to have such an opposite outlook and just really love life. So, 
this particular topic last week and that was just mind you that was just an example I used the topic last week was staying true to God's Word and to realize that sin is sin no matter what that sin is so like I said jump back and check that out um, let me see here Diana says I had a great surprise on Monday a young lady I met about two and a half years ago in a very small marriage class called me she and her boyfriend are getting married and she wanted to talk to me about marriage I was so honored that is fabulous that is a perfect example of why we need to plant seeds and why we need to talk to people and that's also a good example of realizing and understanding that we don't know who we touch when we have conversations that's awesome that is so so awesome good morning Charles Amanda says wow this has been on my mind a lot lately working on purging and simplifying well you will you will be inspired today trust me um, what I have learned you guys have to know um, Shelly says I have been decluttering big time but it still looks like I have not gotten rid of anything <sighs> you know I think my house would probably look the same if I didn't have everything out in the shed or I shouldn't say that but because we've gotten rid of a lot um, when I started in the shed when we moved here everything from the storage unit went into the shed and then over the years stuff just got shoved in there and then somebody went out to look for their stuff and things got rearranged and, de and it just became this massive heap so when I got out there I think I started working in that a little bit in November and in spring we dug everything out but you had to hold things in place to close the door. You had to move things out to get in. Now when you go in there, with the exception of a pile in the middle, because that needs to be donated to town, um, I can walk around the entire inside of the shed, and the outside walls are what is organized. We've sold things. We've decluttered things. We've gifted things. We've thrifted things. We've donated things. And to be quite honest, I am anxious to do it again once we know what we're doing moving forward. Because there are things that I've kept. I'm looking, in, I'm in my office right now. And there are things in my Kubi that I know I really don't want anymore. But I couldn't get rid of them yet until I knew for sure what we were doing. And it's funny, those things weigh on me. And, and what you don't realize is how debilitating the piles and the stuff are. I have found such great joy and peace in my house. The one night, I have to tell you this, my my loft has become my routine exercise location. I have floor space to stretch and do yoga. I have my exercise bike, my weight bench, we have an inversion table, I have my yoga ball. There's a, and I, I there's a lot I can do in there and I've been really focusing on re-strengthening myself. And the one night I just thought I would take some time and do some stretching before I went to bed. I knew it would relax me. And at night we don't have a lot of lights on and when and it had been an overcast day if I recall or at least the evening clouded up. So we had everything dark and the mountain man was down on the couch with his um, Kindle watching a YouTube and I was upstairs with the lights off. My window in my office was open and I could hear the birds chirping and it was just so peaceful. It was so peaceful and I've realized so much through this process because I'm going to use an example. I have a fetish for journals. So I had 10, 12 journals in a tote that you know I kept on hand. Each year comes around, I pull, I have to decide. There's too many choices. I have to decide what journal I want. It's hard to do. It's overwhelming. You know, even though you don't realize it, we give ourselves overwhelm in a constant situation because we have abundance. Now, what's really ironic about that is, while cleaning off my bookshelves, I found 10 journals. And they all were pretty much blank other than a couple pages that I started because I had this great New Year's resolution to finish it. But what that made me realize is why we cannot follow through with our New Year's resolutions. We are so overstimulated by stuff, by apps, by machines, by things, by projects that we start and we don't finish because 
all of a sudden overstimulation sets in and we have to do another project because you saw that in your arsenal or somebody else was making it. Those journals were such a reminder to me that we, we don't follow through. I am so proud to say that this year my journal has not missed a day. And it was through devotion and an extreme um, decision to be using that journal on a daily basis. Because being able to look back on what we're doing is really refreshing. But to realize why. Now I don't do New Year's resolutions anymore. I haven't for quite a while. But I have been trying to set healthy habits and create healthy habits and get a schedule and a routine. And it's been a three, four year process, but I really feel this year I've nailed it and I'm really excited about that. But I have found through this process that it is because of getting rid of stuff and decluttering and, and choosing to simplify, choosing to be minimalistic. Now there's been a lot of comments, so let me scroll here. Jill says, I so get that in regard to Shelly's comment about looking like it didn't get rid of anything. And girl, I know you've been getting rid of a lot. And it is, it's such a process to go through stuff, especially, you know, okay, I'm 49. I had my first apartment at 18. I still have things from my first apartment. Um, of course, cooking things you're always going to have, but I still had things from my first apartment. Decorations, clothing from high school. They're circling back, but I did get rid of them. Um, but we hang on to things, and and when you're when you're going through the house and you're decluttering, I know, Shelly, you'll probably agree. You start and you start in your say your bedroom, and then you go to two other rooms. And while you're in those two other rooms, you realize that in your bedroom you were being a little bit too um, unwilling to get rid of things. So you go back there and you start going through a couple things because you recall that you didn't and could have gotten rid of things. So it is a process. And I went through the shed four times, guys. Um, Diana says, I always look worse before, or it always looks, you certainly don't, it always looks worse before it looks better. And it does. Oh my gosh, you guys have seen my bomb. If you look back at the other videos and see how my house was stacked full of crap and just um, you know, uh, construction equipment and just things were just in such disarray. And it's hard to live like that. I grew up in a house where everything kept moving as we were under construction. So I was used to that, but I could feel the tension of the stuff after about two months. So it does start to wear on you. And that's another uh, indicator for me as to how much it really affected us and affects us. And I got to share some more things with you then too. Uh, Anita says prayer request. My husband started a new medication for his psoriatic arthritis. I don't know if I said that right. And is having more pain on the new meds. Please pray he gets relief and the pain goes away. Absolutely, my dear friend. Absolutely. Um, you know, not all, not all meds work with everybody, just like natural meds. So, um, he'll definitely be praying that they find the right medication for him. And I will look into that too because there's a lot of really good natural pain medications and things for arthritis that um, can give great relief. So I'll, ch I'll ch ugh, chat with you a little later. Um, Shelly says praying for pain relief. Oh, you guys are awesome. Okay, Tammy says, I am making things worse, but they will be so much better by Sunday. I'm glad to have a few days to focus on just cleaning and decluttering. Awesome. You know, guys... I did a podcast on this yesterday. It, um, Kathy Lip is a really good person for um, learning how to declutter. And she recommends to her audience to devote 15 minutes a day. Now, for me, when I dive into something like that and I'm going to have a room tour apart, I, I'll devote a whole half a day. Um, but that's me. I, I just know what I'm capable of. Um, but if you are someone that gets discouraged easily... 15 minutes a day and just keep going and keep in the same pattern, eventually you will hit your goal. Um, but what happens a lot is people do hit overwhelm. Like Tammy's saying, you know, you hit a point where everybody's in the house and you've got other people involved and it makes it hard because it's inevitable. They add their clutter too. And if they're children, 
well, and adults, you know, they don't always, they make piles and they leave them. And what I found is that my family fed off of the peace and the comfort they gained. And my house is staying this way because everybody's making a conscious effort because it feels so good. And we truly believe in a minimalistic life. Um, we, we were gifted things, we're donated things, we carry things along with us. And you know, when you're moving, it's hard to declutter while you're moving and in that process, but we've had time. So as you progress, you will feel so much relief. And it is truly a process. This has been months. You've seen me. And like I said, I went through the shed four times. I went through the shed and got stuff out I was selling. I went through again. I got stuff out I was um, donating and giving away and gifting. I went through again and I organized. And I, I, I made sure that I didn't hang on to things I didn't need. And then I brought things out from the house. Then I went back through and I labeled things. Now I have it so that when you start from the left and go all the way around to the right, it is the least important stuff going into my storage trailer first and then to the most important stuff. Um, and I've, I've got us down to the bare bones and it feels so great. And we still got a lot of stuff. But the thing is when we move forward, I don't want to be donating things that I know we could use in our new home. So. It only makes sense to do that versus having to shell out money and buy it at full price when I already had it. So we are hanging on to quite a bit of stuff for that reason. And that's why I will be so thankful when I can just get rid of all of that unnecessary things. I am to the point, guys, that I am in such a minimalistic mode that I would be so thankful to just be able to put my most favorite personal daily effects in a backpack. And that's all I need. Um... I am finding that I am so much more productive, so much more energetic, so much more happier and joyful, so much more focused, so much more able to start a task and finish it versus jumping from one thing to the next. And I find that when I, when I sit, used to sit down and I had some free time, I'd waste my free time because I couldn't figure out what to do. How stupid and senseless is that? But it's reality. We are so overstimulated by stuff that we don't function well. And I, I see it and I'm gonna preach it and I'm gonna teach it because gosh, this is awesome. All right, let me see here. Oh, my screen's not moving. All right, and I'm praying for you, Tammy, that's awesome. Kick it in the butt this week. Um, I am using a free online genealogy program to upload 12 cases of research. I am down to four boxes. Wow. <laughs> That is awesome. And being able, paper is something I got rid of a long time ago. Um, before I got sick, probably two years before I got sick, so like five years ago, I started switching over to the clouds. I, I was against it. Um, I'm a web designer, I'm a programmer, I know about hackers, but you know what? I travel to my man's jobs a lot. I, I was out yesterday under a tree in the shade writing for over an hour. It was so refreshing and it was so awesome. Surrounded by dogs. It was just great. Um, so I can pack my stuff on my back and still have everything I need on whatever piece of equipment I choose. But what that did is got rid of all this paper garbage. One of the first things we got rid of out of the shed was three huge filing cabinets just loaded with business stuff that I just didn't need. Um, I have my web design business, I have my writing business, we have Treyer Wilderness, we have Treyer Wilderness Academy, um, we have Treyer Designs, we have Treyer Construction. A lot to keep track of, but man, when you can get rid of that paper. The other thing I see a lot of people do is you come home with your mail and you just set it and then eventually get a chance to go through it. And instead of just pitching the trash right off the bat, you let it sit and then it just piles up. I come home, I get to go through my trash, I rip up what I don't want, I burn what needs to be burnt, and I keep what needs to be kept until I pay it, and then it becomes electronic and it's gone, it gets burnt. It's such a process and it eliminates so much clutter and hassle and worrying about a place to store it. So, so thankful for that. Okay, let me see here. 
Oh, I love you guys. I see you guys communicating with Anita and praying for her, and I'm so thankful. We have such an awesome, awesome group of people. Um, Diana said, I put him on my prayer list. Do some research on Moringa. I found out about it from a man who was suffering greatly from rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah, Moringa is a great, great um, pain. It, Moringa has a lot of, of medicinal uses so that is one that's really good for uh, pain with such things as well as inflammation uh, Anita says she's trying to purge it is so overwhelming it is overwhelming but if you start in one room focus in that room get that room done and just keep moving on it'll be so much easier and you know it's so nice to wake up to a home that is in order it is so nice to go to bed with a home that is in order. It's so nice to sit in a home that's in order and not feel the pressure of all the stuff. So I really want to encourage you guys because we just do not realize how much we are debilitated by our stuff. Um, good morning, Miss Heidi May. Hope that baby's keeping you busy. All right, Miss Shelley says, I went through all my clothes and got rid of a lot. My daughter has left all her clothes at my house, so Friday is a day that my mom and I will go through her stuff and organize it. I might even get rid of some of it if it looks stretched or if it has holes. Awesome. Yeah, um, that's another, that was another bonus. Um, I mentioned last week that we moved the Mountain Boy home. In his bedroom right now, I have quite a few of his boxes in there that need to be put into totes. Some of his stuff is in the shed, but when we moved him home, we put everything down in the guest cabin. So my project is to clean up that spare bedroom. Um, I have some books in there and boxes of mine. My um, medicinal health stuff is in there. So it's stuff in there that we're still using. My uh, sun ovens, which I've been using pretty daily. But I'm gonna get all his stuff in one place. Again, when we have to go, we will pull his storage trailer up to the cabin, load everything in it, and it makes the whole process easy. And and just organization. I am by nature an organized person, and I praise God for that every day because with everything that we've got going on all the time, if I wouldn't be, I couldn't imagine where I would be. And I'm going to share something with you a little later um, in regard to that. Um, Nita says, thanks, Diana. I will look into that. Yes, I love the way you guys are communicating with each other. Um, and Diana says, you've hit the nail right on the head. It's just, <clears throat> you know, for example, kitchen. Kitchen's a really good one. I have got myself down to such a minimalistic um, load in my kitchen. It's my cast iron. It's my pottery. It's my baskets. And our dishes I have gone through now I have a mixer I have a juicer um, what else do I have that's electric my dehydrator then of course I have all my canning stuff canning stuff doesn't count that's not your everyday stuff but my everyday stuff is down to bare minimum you know we go in the stores and we see stuff and this is this was true of me when I was younger but not now um, but you go in the store or somebody has something at their house and it seems to make things easier so you get it you go home and you're lucky if you use it we are impulse buyers and I have learned to just sit on things if I think I need to have something I will sit on it and I will shop around see if I can find the best price um, and more than likely I end up nixing the purchase um, I don't want excess in my house and I can guarantee you right now if you go through your kitchen and you go through your cupboards there are things in the back that you've either never used or you used once or twice and you'll never use again but it's taken up valuable space and we have a tendency to do that in life it's just it's just so easy and I guess for us we don't leave the homestead much we do shop online, that can be dangerous, but I don't even look unless I need something. And I try to keep like blinders on when I'm looking. Uh, but we purchase specifically what we need. I make lists of things that I might need from time to time and we'll hit the thrift stores first and see if I can find them there. And more than likely, especially the ones in the big cities, I can find what I'm looking for. I found an Oster um, blender had to get a new one. My mountain man stole mine for his trapping lure and there was no way I was going to use that again in my kitchen. I don't even know what was in there. I have ideas. Anyway, 
So eight bucks. And um, that is the way I shop. I don't need brand new, brand new breaks. I like the old stuff. The old stuff lasts, even the clothes. When I go thrifting for clothing, you know, you can find the older name brand clothes and a lot of times with tags on them and they hold up so, so much better. But that was the other thing I went through too. Uh, Shelly said about going through her daughter's clothes. You know, we, we tend to have a lot of clothing. We do out here because we go through it a lot. But reality is, you know, 30 sweaters don't serve anybody a purpose. Uh, you know, that I could wear one a day. But reality is, it just takes up space. So what I have vowed to do is just live very minimally have what I need for each season. If I get tired of it or it wears out, then I'll get another one and I'll just donate the one I have. Most of what I have is either um, hand-me-downs, which have been fabulous because my girlfriend always has really good taste in clothes, or um, they're th from the thrift store. I can't tell you the last time I bought a new clothing item. I buy my jeans on eBay. Um, you can find Levi's uh, and... Um, like boyfriend pants, jeans on, on eBay for like, if you're lucky, five, sometimes 10 bucks. So, and, and there's a thrift store up uh, an hour from us that has a lot of jeans and I've been getting them there for $2.50 up to $5. So, you know, there's great ways to shop and still stay minimal, but there's things that we all have fetishes for. I love doilies. I love, um linens and I, I love the journals. I love paper because I love to write. But again, having a box full of journals isn't going to serve me well. It just takes up space and again, it's overwhelming. Now, let me see here. Uh, oh, good morning, Ashley. All right, let me see here. Where were we at? Okay, Diana says, I love to organize. Friends and family think I'm nuts when I say I love to organize the messes. So do I because I can't stand the mess. And I love organization. I love ease. I love that my life is um, not cumbersome because of that. As a matter of fact, you're going to laugh at me. Um, Diana won't. I spent the weekend um, going through my iPhone, my iPad, and the older iPad I have that the Mountain Boy is going to be utilizing um, for some special schooling. And I organized, I'll show you, this is a little bit insane, but I have notebooks full of apps. But I have some construction apps, I have writing apps, I have photo and video editing apps, I have communications, I have organization, but anyway, on each device they were in different locations. So I made specific folders, which I had before, but I, I really, really got down to organizing it to that everything was the same. And the purpose of that is so that when I go from one machine to the next, because I'm constantly doing that, um, I write on my iPad out in the wilderness, I also write on my phone out in the wilderness. So. Um, having things at hand, knowing where to find them instead of wasting the time searching and looking. I've spent the last five years doing that in, in everything I do, in my home, on my computer, in the clouds, so that, because most of our time in life is wasted searching for stuff, right? And I just got so tired of doing that. The only thing that I have not organized in that regard is my photos because I take thousands and thousands a year. So I hadn't figured out a good method to that, but my girlfriend made a suggestion and I think that's what I'm going to go with. But keeping things organized in this regard makes it so easy for me to just flow through my day. And one of the apps that I was working on last night is actually going to save me about an hour of time every day. That's huge. That is just huge. So when we can take the time to organize ourselves, declutter ourselves, and enjoy life more because we're not absorbed by the clutter, we gain so much. We gain our lives back. Um, Shelly says, oh uh, wait, there we go. I have what I call a wish list of things I would like for the kitchen. A dehydrator was on the list for around three years and I found a gently used one this week that I bought. You know, 
you were on my mind this morning when I was preparing for this. Um, she also found a double electric burner plate that is good for her canning. And that is the thing I wanted to mention, and I'm glad you mentioned that, because now is the time. Now I'm talking about decluttering. But the thing is, we've got to realize that we need to be functional. We need to have things that are going to make our days easier and our lives easier, but we also need things that are going to help us be prepared. That's what Shelly's doing. Shelly's looking for things that are going to help her be prepared and help her prepare for her future. The dehydrator is going to enable her to uh, dehy dehydrate her food and have a better food storage. And the plates, um, the, the burners are enabling her to can more food. All right. By the way, Thrift stores are a great source for canning jars. Um, so are yard sales. But the thing is, if we can take the time to go out into the thrift stores, the yard sales right now, and find the things we need to help us be more functional, that's the thing. A lot of the stuff we have, it's junk. It has no purpose. You know, they keep in enhancing all the technology so people have VCRs they have DVD players now they have blu-ray now they have I don't even know what they have because I'm not that advanced anymore DVD was the last I had blu-rays beyond me so you have all that old stuff sitting around if you're smart when you upgrade things you either sell the old or you hang on to it for a little while and then get rid of it but we we save things we store things and the stuff we have when you really start going through it is not what's keeping you functional. It's just keeping you decl uh, bound, bound by it. Um, Diana says, 80 to 85% of my clothes are from secondhand shops. I love my secondhand stuff. You guys see me wearing all that knitted, like the little crocheted tops and different things. That's all secondhand stuff that I paid a buck for. And they're so darn cute. This is an old tablecloth that I paid three bucks for. And it, it has, I think it has a hole in the middle or at the one corner, but you can't even see it the way I have it hung. The thing is we need to feed our joy with the things that give us joy, but not have them in abundance. This is functional. This hides my clutter behind in my cubby hole in my closet. So it's how you, it's how you look at it. We got just about all of our clothes from thrift stores. I get my boys' jeans new because I can never find their sizes. Glenn likes uh, Wranglers, uh, the boot cut, and, and you can find different Wranglers, but they're hard to find in that, so I understand. The Mountain Boy, uh, his are pretty easy, but they go through jeans so fast, and jeans, oh my goodness, are expensive, so when you can get that stuff in a thrift store. so. Now I'm talking about purchasing, but, but I'm also talking about decluttering. And the thing is learning to only have and get what you need, not what you think you have to have. You go shopping, I guarantee you how many of you have a hard time when you walk by some of the marketing aisles where they're marketing new stuff. We are saturated, we are a society saturated by extreme marketing. And, and we are so easily drawn into it. I really feel that our lifestyle and the fact that we don't leave our homestead much gives us a different view of the world. We are looking at the world from the outside in. And the peace that has come to my home because we don't have to search for things, we don't have to um, move things to get to stuff, I just love the simplicity. I love the minimalistic aspect of it. And I, I just love my freedom. And part of our downsizing too is because we are going from, oh, I think we figured 1,100, 1100 square feet to probably 400 square feet. That's what we're going to, we're going to switch to. And I'm like thoroughly excited about that. I'm so excited about that. So I want to encourage you guys, and I know I, you know, some of you are already on this path and, and slowly making your way on this path, but how many of you give me, you know, a thumbs up or say a yes, that how many of you are overwhelmed by the fact that you have stuff and you don't know how to go through the process? Tell me that. I'm going to read some more here. All right, let me see. Shelly says, 
I bought an old style hand beater that I use more than I do my electric one. It is so satisfying to make whipped cream this way. That's all I have. And I know, they're so fun. I, I, um, my mother-in-law sent me one that was her great aunt's. And um, I love the old Bakelite handles. I don't have anything here to show you right now, but it's an old plasticky, some of them look more plasticky, others look more like um, a stone kind of, but they're, it's just a really, I love old stuff like that. So yes, and it's kind of romantic to me to be able to pull stuff like that off my wall. Initially, all those things were on my walls and I would pull them off, wash the dust off and then use them. Um, they were my decorations and that very well may be what happens in our new home. I'm not sure, but using that stuff is just awesome. I love it. I have old potato mashers. You know, we don't have electric appliances other than my um, blender and that's so that I can do smoothies and my juicer. Diana says, I have that problem with my husband because his inseam is 36 inches. Old Navy has sales on jeans and we can get them for 15 each. Awesome. 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 I am not a shopper, so I avoid those chain stores like the plague. I just don't do good in that environment, but that's awesome. I used to shop Old Navy, especially when my kids were little. Um, Jill says, I wait 48 hours to make purchases to remove emotion purchases. Is it a need or a want is easier when there is no emotion? Very much so. Very much so. And that's the thing I want you guys to pay attention to. You know, when you're in the store, how often are you being drawn to things that you don't need? It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so you need to pay attention to that. Shelly says, I very rarely go shopping unless it is for groceries. I do not have cable and I'm not exposed to all the ads. I know. Praise God, right? When, when we were down for my surgery... Um, in Georgia three years ago. Yeah, that's pretty much all we could do was because I was I was flat on my back. And um, all the the stinking prescription ads. I mean, it was and, and the ads for stuff. We just kept looking at each other. I mean, it was it's just nuts. It's no wonder things are the way they are. Plus the trash that's on TV. But yes, and and so not being affected by that and so you're in some ways looking from the outside in as well because when we are not subjected to TV and and the media and like I said we aren't a part a daily part of society anymore and it feels so good and I, I just can't ever imagine going back there um, this lifestyle is amazing I want to ask you guys something I want to ask you two questions they came to mind this morning. I know this is a little bit, well, I'm going to just ask you the one. How many of you are afraid to step out of the mold that society has set for us? Think about that and answer that question for me. And yes, I only go grocery shopping too, or construction shopping. Other than that, we don't shop. I hate shopping. My son wears a 3236 and one is a 3234. They were 30 waist and it was even harder. Yeah, 30s, 30s were hard. 32s, I'm actually fortunate. That's the mountain boy, so I get pretty lucky around here. There must be a lot of people the same size. But yes, it can be a challenge. Guys seem to be harder um, to, to find their clothes. I think because most of the time, guys are wearing their stuff out where women just have a huge variety in their closets and just downsize. Um, Tammy says, Oh, and Caleb is extremely picky on how the jeans feel. Oh, that's funny. I can believe that. Yes. So the reason I ask what I ask is, um, about being afraid to step out of the mold of society. You know, society says that we are supposed to go to school. We are supposed to go to college or, Go right, okay, so you've got two choices. You go to school, then you either go to college or you start a job. All right, if you go to college, you come out of college, you're already in debt. Then you have, you go and you find a job. And then you have children, you buy a house and a cul-de-sac, and in today's society, both parents are working. And you're, you're in debt up to your eyeballs, and we are in a society of extreme marketing and commercialism, and it's just a continuous rat race. Now that is what society has set up for us. Society wants us to depend on social security. They want us to um, 
ret retire. We're, we're living toward retirement with the idea that we will be able to live out our dreams. We will have enough money to live out our dreams. And the problem is you get to retirement, and I've experienced this through and with so many people. They retire, and their health goes bad. They retire, they have a heart attack and die. They retire and they don't have enough money to live their dreams anyway and now they don't have purpose in life so they just kind of wither. Why are we not living our dreams now? That's my question. Why is society not living our dreams now? We are and that is why we are here. And although um, my medical issues put a big um, monkey wrench in things for us, it's also showed us where we need to head. And that is why we are choosing to live very minimalistically because we are not going to have an overhead. We are not going to um, have any debt. And we are going to um, live life by our terms. We don't need things, so we don't need a large income. And we are living our day to day doing the things that we aspire and dream to do versus waiting till we're of retirement age and unable to do it. I still do intend to climb mountains in my 80s, but I would much rather do it now. And I would much rather enjoy what I what I want to do now than wait because today's a gift. Tomorrow's you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. So I want to just put those thoughts. Yes, you can. Oh, she's talking to Tammy. All right, let me have to go back and see what you guys are saying. Um and yes, you can join me too, Shelly. Um, I want you guys to think about that. You know, if we declutter and we minimalize and we get ourselves out of the uh, norm of society and out of the mindset that we have to have stuff to be happy and we lessen our debt and focus on the two most valuable things in life that we cannot get back, and the two most valuable things that we choose to not give enough attention to. And that's time and the, th the people that matter most to us. We're, we're racing the job to the job to make the money to pay for the house that we can't enjoy because we're on the job. We hate the job we're working. I want you to think about that because that is what we thought about nine years ago. And, and going against the grain of society um, isn't always the easiest. Uh, we lost friends. We lost family. We have people shaking their heads and totally not understanding our lifestyle, our desires, and our dreams. But it doesn't matter. They're our dreams, and it's our choice. And we have the ability to make choices. You guys need to realize that. Everybody thinks we have to follow suit. There's there's no, nothing that's mapped out that says that that's a, a must do. So why do we do it? I want you to think about that stuff because it really is something that lays heavy on me. All right, let me see here. Tammy says, we have been considered weird for a long time. I am good with it. So am I. You know what? <laughs> we are who we are and if we can be happy with who we are that's a thing that counts this is funny it's funny that you say that the other question I had for today is how many of you worry about what other people think I used to I don't care anymore I don't care what other people think if I am happy and I am enjoying my life and I am living by God's direction Nothing else really matters to me. Um, I am blessed by an amazing family, and and we've got to learn to do what works for us, not what works for somebody else, and not what what somebody else dictates. So weird is good. I like weird. All right, hold on here. Shelly says, I have been afraid to be different, but with all my health issues, with allergies, I sort of have to be different. I have been working hard at getting my debt gone, but before I would not have, before I would not have, I have been becoming different. Yeah, and that's good. You're becoming you. And that's the thing, guys. Um, we need to 
there are dots on my glasses and they're driving me crazy. Um, we need to be happy in our own skin. We need to be happy with our choices and the things that we do for ourselves and not worry about people. You know, we need to be, we need to focus on what makes us happy and not other people because typically most of those people that we are trying to please don't even care if we exist. And it's a truth. So I want you to think about these things. Normal is boring. Amen, sister. Amen. <laughs> Charles says, I understand about being retired. Sold my sawmill last fall and I am alone. Anyway, I've lost 42 pounds just dieting and resting on, on the word now. Awesome, Charles. And, and the 42 pounds, that is awesome because you're hitting a really healthy space. But I, I would love your point on that, Charles. Um, it, it's what has been passed down to us. It's what we've been told we are supposed to do. And... I just see so many people reaching that point of retirement and being disappointed and unable to do what they were dreaming to do their entire life. What a waste of life. What a waste of our abilities. And all it is is because we are choosing to follow the suit of society. Who said it was right or wrong? And who says we can't be different? I want to inspire different. I'm weird, we're, we're weird, we're different, we're, we, we are in our own category more often than not. And you know what? I'm totally happy with that. I look at so many unhappy, bitter, and unpleasant people as a result of life circumstances and living on, by other people's terms instead of our own. Shelley says, why would we want to be normal? Actually, what is normal? Maybe use weird Oh, maybe us weird ones are normal. <laughs> right, exactly. And and I like beating to a different drum. My husband and I have always been that way. You know, I look back on high school. I could get along with everybody. I didn't. I didn't stick to one segment of people. I just got along with everybody. You know, Learning to be happy with ourselves and learning to be comfortable in our own skin and choosing to do the things that gives us joy, makes us happy, is the most important thing we can do for ourselves. And you know, Charles mentioned something too, you know, he's living in the Word. That was one of the best things that we have done is just devoting time to God, allowing God to lead the way and trusting him for the outcomes of the unfortunate circumstances. But having God present every day makes such a difference in that as well. And also gives you the courage to be who you are. You know, we owe ourselves that. We owe ourselves that. And you know, um, I used to care greatly what people thought. And today I, I look around and I see just how hard it is not to offend somebody. There's somebody offended about everything. And you can't, you can't please people. But if we're pleasing God and we are focusing on what gives us joy and happiness, there's no better life. And spending our time wisely... Once you declutter your home, you will have so much time and you will be so less overwhelmed because those of you that are overwhelmed with all the stuff, once it's gone, imagine not having to worry about it or, or focus on that, that you could actually focus on something. I'm going to show you in a little bit what I've been focusing on on my Sundays. Um, Shelly said I was like that in high school too. No real group to hang with and was with all groups. Yeah, you know, I didn't. Even then, you know, it wasn't, I didn't, I didn't have the desire to be like somebody else. I didn't have the desire to, or the feeling of jealousy over someone else, what they had or their accomplishments. And I'm thankful for that because a lot of society too looks out their window and is jealous of what their neighbors have. But what you've got to look at is beyond the material things. Sorry, it's my dog. Go on, old man sounds so nasty. Anyway, 
you know, you look at all the stuff people have, but what you don't see is their unhappiness. You don't see uh, their, their checkbook and their extreme debt. And none of that should really matter. We need to learn to just focus in our world and not worry about other people and what they think and what they have and what they do. You know, I had a really good job out of high school. I programmed and I did really love the job. I loved the people there. I was a real blessing. But, ah, I don't know what they're doing. All of them are in my office all of a sudden and they're gonna knock my tripod pod down. But being able to call the shots and have my own business and to be able to work my business around my kids' homeschooling and so forth, you know, that goes against the grain of society too, but it was the most fulfilling thing I've ever done. And having my own business and being able to work around the varying things that we do in our homestead, you know, you've got, we've got to learn to not be afraid. And this is, this is where portion number two comes in, but I want to share I'll, I'll, I'll read this and then I'm going to share, well, now I'm going to share this with you. Okay. I told you I have a doily fetish and a linen fetish and I was at the antique store in town getting, I think I was getting this actually. And I said to the lady about my fetish and I said, I have, um, some suitcases in my dining room that have my linens in, but I said, I hate to use them because they always end up getting stained up. You know, I, I, I try to keep them for nice. And she goes, how often do you use them for nice? I said, we don't really, you know, we don't have parties or anything, you know? She says, so why do you have them then? And I was like, you know, that put things into such perspective for me. Why do I have them if I'm not going to use them? How many of you have stuff that you're saving for a special occasion? How many of you have stuff piling up that, that, um, you want to use for this special party, but then when you have the party, you never pull it out anyway. We have this habit of doing that. When we moved here, my girlfriend sent me out these really cute little um, soaps and I didn't want to use them because they were so cute. So I started making my own soaps so I wouldn't have to use them. How silly is that? I did use them then when I realized after this comment was made to me how silly that was. Plus, now I can make any kind of cute soaps I want. But the thing is we save stuff. We save it for odd and crazy reasons. The thing is, we, we know we have today, but we don't have tomorrow. So why do we, why do we do these things? Time is the same thing. You know, well, I'm not going to do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. Abundance and clutter causes us to be, um, procrastinators. We procrastinate. We put stuff off till the next day. I see it in my son sometimes because he doesn't always, he doesn't embrace the world the way we do. We just, we just dive in. He's more reserved. So he takes things, he does things differently. And sometimes that perspective helps me to teach you guys because I know there's others out there like that, that there's a lot of fear involved. We're afraid to break the mold of normal. And like Shelly said, what is normal? But we're afraid to be different. We are afraid to be different. And why? We are different. God made each and every one of us different from the other. I always say to my husband, could you imagine two of me? And he shivers, you know, all in good humor. You got to find humor in things too, guys. If you can't laugh, why bother? Life is meant to have fun. But we are made to be different. We each have a calling. We each have things that, um, we are capable of, but we have flesh too. And that as a result of our flesh, we are fearful individuals. We are afraid to be different. We are afraid to step out and do something that's bold and big and courageous compared to what the rest of the world does. We are afraid to say that we're Christians. We're afraid to stand up for the things we believe in because that makes waves. But the thing is, as we stay afraid, 
We are missing the best parts in life. As we stay afraid, we are allowing our rights to be taken away. Do you know it is illegal to live off grid in some states? Do you know it is illegal to catch water from the sky in some states? Do you know that they are approving things, like I said last week, you know, about the same-sex marriages and um, all kinds of things are being approved in this country that are wrong. And we're sitting back and we're afraid. We're afraid to speak up for the most important things. We're afraid to live life to the fullest because people will think we're nuts. Who gives a crap? I, there you have it. Who cares? Who cares? The last three years have been the worst three years of my life, but they have been the absolute best three years of my life because of the growth of what God has showed us, of stepping out, of feeling God's presence in our lives, of not being afraid to be who we are. And we've established that nine years ago, but the more we're in it, the more we realize how much more fun it is and how many sad and hurting and lonely and unhappy and deep in debt people we have around us because they're afraid they're afraid and and they're consumed so I want to read something to you now let me see here <laughs> I just saw what Shelly wrote ah, I finally started using my wedding china for every day it was just collecting dust yeah Yes, exactly. All well, your fur babies are going nuts from the sounds of it. Yeah, I don't know what that was all about. They were just pacing all of a sudden. I might I don't know if I said something that sounded like their favorite W word. You know, that four-letter word, W-A-L-K. One of them knows how to spell it. But um, I'm, I'm not doing that today because I had a little situation this weekend. When I sneeze, I sneeze. And I sneezed this weekend and my abs popped in two different places. And I have been in severe pain since. And I think I pulled a stomach muscle. I'm rebuking a hernia. Um, but I do think it's a pulled muscle because I've got lat pain and lower back pain. So I think that it's a result of just strained muscle. But I I did go for my WALK yesterday. But I, I did feel great stress from it so I took a break today so if you keep me in your prayers for that for healing and Shelly said mine shivers shivers thinking that also isn't that funny I love it I love it I love it I'm sure mine would too Diana says <laughs> good morning Miss Mona Charles says I can relate uh oh you lost me am I back am I back I hope so I'm back I hope I'm back because um, I want to read something to you guys this is really huge this is really huge, and I think this will scream um, to a lot of you and help you to not care about being different and about stepping out and doing what you enjoy versus what society tells us we're supposed to enjoy. And just living our lives the way we choose. You know, I love that um, Shelly is embracing things the way she is with her debt and and many of you are decluttering and I really, really um, pray that you guys continue and don't give up because the reward is so, so great. And as we move forward, like I told you, we are, you know, we are going to be um, moving on from this place, but um, the people are, are try our wilderness. So we will be sharing our journey with you um, as this all unravels. And before I forget to share this with you, we had a showing this week. This was number four. The first one drove partway back the, the lane and turned around out of fear, I believe. I think they thought they were uh, driving into deliverance. The other two canceled like 15 minutes beforehand, one of which said they wanted the house on the first level, which was clearly noted in the listing. But number four was refreshing. Number four um, was a fella with um, a family of uh, six children and he was like a kid in a candy store. He was just so excited to be out here. So, you know, we're not getting excited. We're just trusting God timing wise and for the right person. I mean, that would be a real blessing to have a good neighbor. Um, that's what we're praying for and for people to appreciate this place as much as we do. Um, that's the other thing, guys. You know, get your strength from God. Trust God for the outcome and the things that are happening in your life. And um, 
Don't be afraid to be different. Even if somebody calls you weird, who cares? Who cares? If you're happy and you're enjoying your life, a lot of times the people that are going to call you weird are jealous. And again, like I told you, that's not a good trait to have for yourself. So let that one dissipate and let, let you know, you can't help how other people feel and react. Just be you. Uh, Michelle says, it is a place you and your family are the home. Yes, that, that's cool. I like that. I like that a lot. All right. Now I want to read this to you and I want you guys to let this sink in. It's, it's said that, uh, don't wait until tomorrow. Stop putting it off. Psalms 90.12 says, teach us to number our days. In 1985, a newspaper essay, Ann Wells wrote, my brother-in-law opened my sister's bureau and lifted out a tissue wrap package. It was an exquisite silk handmade slip. The price tag with an astronomical figure on it was still attached. Jan bought this the first time we went to New York eight or nine years ago, he said. She never wore it. She was saving it for a special occasion. Well, I guess this is the occasion. He put the slip on the bed with the other clothes we were taking to the mortician. Let that sink in. Then he turned to me. Don't ever save anything for a special occasion. Every day you're alive is a special occasion. The words changed Ann Wells' life. She continued, I'm not saving anything anymore. Now we use our good china for every special occasion. Like losing a pound, getting the sink unstopped, the first camellia blossom. Someday and one of those days are fighting a losing battle to stay in my vocabulary. If it's worth seeing, hearing, or doing, I want to see, hear, or do it now. I am trying very hard to put off, put off, hold back, or say anything that would add laughter and luster to our lives. And every morning when I open my eyes, I tell myself this is a special occasion. Makes you think, doesn't it? Makes you want to drain the last ounce of joy out of every day and break free from the cement of procrastination that whispers, you can do it later. Right? Wise up. Forgive that offense. Tell that person you love them. Take that trip. Go back to school. Decide today to do the thing you've been putting off. Today I'm telling you to be you. And stop being afraid to be you. And stop being afraid to be different. And stop saving things. And stop not using your most favorite things. I have been using my favorite things that give me great joy. And you know, um, several of them have gotten broken while we are here. And you know what? I find great joy going to the thrift store and finding something new to replace it for a dollar. Life is short and we put our focus on material things before we put our focus where it needs to be. Can you get time back? Can you get loved ones back? This is the truth, guys. How many of us choose not to go do something because it costs money and therefore don't do anything? The nice thing is the man and I enjoy doing things that don't cost money. We go for hikes. now. Sunday, Saturday was when I sneezed. Sunday I wasn't feeling quite, quite right. Monday I was really bad. So he asked about going for a hike with him and I figured I was probably better off not. So I chose to do something different. He went for an amazing walk, did some really amazing videos, which I will be adding to our YouTube channel. I encourage you guys to check it out. He's getting back into bushcraft and I'm so excited. The outdoors is our passion and we are starting to really gain traction and gaining traction and doing things that we enjoy doing. This is what I was working on. You guys might remember me showing you the very beginning process of my basket. This is what it's turning out to be. It's going to be about double the height yet and I'm starting now to be able to add the handle. So envision this about up here and I'm going to start weaving the handle into it. So this is what I was working on and I want to share something with you. 
for the first time in a long time. I have the joy and ability to focus on one thing at a time. I've got knitting projects started, socks, dish rags, hot pads. I've got leather projects started. I've been trying to make a pair of moose hide moccasins for nine years or eight years. I have drawings started. And I don't know, I didn't know why it was and it aggravated me to no end. And granted, sometimes, you know, our, our seasons would change, so I'd have to switch projects because I didn't have time to knit any longer. But the thing is, guys, when we are so saturated by clutter, by abundance, by fear, we cannot slow our brains down enough to stay consciously focused on a project. And we just keep jumping. We keep jumping looking for that filler of joy. How many of you have stuff started like that? I guarantee you, when you simplify and stop needing all the best next stuff, and you start really honing in on what gives you joy, and you will be focused. You will be so focused. I cannot wait to finish that. I am just like so excited and I'm already gearing up to work on the next one. That is a fun project and that's another one of those projects that I love because it utilizes the pine needles in my backyard. So I'm in abundance. I can make all kinds of baskets. And what's really cool is um, there were certain tribes of Indians that made baskets like that. And of course the center was the pine nut needles. Um, those are ponderosa pine needles. And they would um, weave it so tight in the center just with the needles and they would weave it so tight that without even putting sap or anything else in it to seal it they would be able to put water in that basket and it would stay in the basket of course you know me and most of you know me well that is my goal I love being able to utilize what's in our surroundings and be able to make the things that we need to um, be able to continue moving on if something were to happen. So while you're decluttering, be careful what you're decluttering. Um, my rule of thumb is if I haven't used it for three years and it has no absolutely no value whatsoever to my future and my preparedness levels, then I don't have a problem getting rid of it. Now, I've got all kinds of supplies for leather working, knitting, um, like I said on my podcast yesterday, I can make us socks. I can make us afghans and quilts and blankets and I could make myself shirts. I could even make the men boxers if I had to. I know they wouldn't like wearing them. I have all my leather working equipment that if for some reason I can no longer get shoes, I can brain tan a hide and I can make myself a pair of shoes. Knowing these things, having the tools and you know, you need to keep the things that are going to keep you moving forward. But when it comes to abundance and excess and things that you don't need and things that are just weighing you down and that you've kept for years and never used, you either need to start using them or you need to unload. Let me see here. Thank you, guys. You said about my basket. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Jill says I got rid of all my old... Are you talking records? I, d I didn't know what WIPs are, so educate me. I'm weird. <laughs> and Shelly says, I'm in the process of knitting Christmas gifts. Shelly starts knitting now, and you probably started earlier, didn't you? And she, she gifts a lot of really cool stuff. So that is the thing, guys. If we can come up with the things that give us joy and then, you know, I want to encourage you guys to have that day of rest, you know, regardless um, what day you take that. Some people take it Saturdays. We, we, our day of rest is Sundays. Oh, sorry. I got, uh, Jill says her work in pro progress. She got rid of a lot of her work in progress. Yeah, you know, and it's hard when you go back to try to figure out where you left off on some things. It's, we need to follow through. <laughs> Shelly said she started working on her stuff in January. So, that's a good thing. She's planning ahead. She's not having to wait till November to start stressing to try to make things. Plus the things she makes take time. She's got a plan. I'm sure she's got a list. You know, so there again is her organization levels. 
But I encourage you to really start embracing decluttering. Embrace being who you are. Embrace not putting things off till tomorrow. And embrace being different. It's okay. And I guarantee you, as a result of being different, you're going to enjoy your life so much more. We don't have to follow society. Society would like us to. But we don't have to follow that suit. That just makes us people that are dependent. Can you see how dependent we are? Because we are a disheveled mess. We are afraid to make decisions for ourselves. We are afraid to be different. We are consumers and we are overabundantly decluttered or cluttered and just overwhelmed by abundance. We need to make changes. And these are, you know, the thing is we have the ability to make all kinds of changes. Shelly says, yes, I have a list and I have a project planned. Okay. So since we are talking about lists, I want to show you guys something. I'm going to do my best to do this. Let me see what would be the best way to do this. Um, let me see here. And how about that devotional today? Do you see how important it is for us to put to not put things off? Speaking of which, we have a lot of prayer requests this week. Um, I got this information after last Wednesday's, but Pat Kenny that we've been praying for is starting up new chemo this week. Um, I talked to him last night. He had to get two pints of blood in order to be able to progress with chemo. Chemo is nasty. Cancer is nasty, but I think chemo and radiation are worse. So I really ask that you pray for him. As a result of the chemo, he has congestive heart failure. His son-in-law, Mark, um, had emergency surgery last week. Um, they found that he has the same cancer that Pat does. And um, it's in his spine. So they were concerned greatly about paralysis, but as um, things went, he had enough room around his... Uh, spinal cord that there was not paralysis um, but they're going to do another surgery this week through his chest to put cages around his spinal column so that if it breaks again as a result of the cancer that he it won't affect his uh, spinal cord um, he is 54 so I want you guys to let that soak into. We need to pray for these people and we need to embrace life. And we're just, we're not gifted tomorrow. And so many of us take that for granted. I experienced that back in 2013, I'm sorry, 16. And it changed my life. It changed my perspective and it is really fueling my fire to share my thoughts with you guys. So, we have a lot of other prayer requests too. I'm going to really quickly go over those. Um, Anita and her two boys are on that list. You can find the prayer list down below and then I'm going to show you something. Um, we have Deborah Kidd who is also going through cancer treatments. We have Tia and Diana and Craig, Benjamin. Kim and Martin and the family, um, they, he is still in a coma. He has been transferred to a nursing home. Um, he will be getting uh, baths. He will be sitting. He will be um, doing, I believe, different therapies too. Um, but he is still in a coma. But he is following people when they talk and he is making facial expressions. He is, he is really a miracle in his circumstances because he shouldn't be reacting in the coma that he's in. So Kim is continuously praying for her miracle, and I know she will have it. Just pray for them. It's a very hard place for she and her children to be and for such a long period of time. I believe it's going on 150 days, and that's a long time to be without your spouse and your father and to also see him in that state. But just keep praying. God is going to work a miracle. I know he is. Um, we have prayers for Tammy and her family, for Chad, for Kelly and her family, for John, for Shelly and her family and Sarah and we have Carolyn and Eileen prayers for Charles and uh, for Terry and June for Mona and Ken for Bill and Sue and Val and Cindy Taylor and her family Lori Shannon and Angela 
next we have Vicki and Erica and we have uh, Scott and Crystal Powell we have uh, Todd and the Dirt Road Girl and uh, Cindy and Steve and Marla and Terry and um, JC and, and Lori need special prayers and Jenny and Justin need special prayers and we have Jack and Judy and Tara and John and Justin and Heather and Roger and Wendy Veal. Roger's a unique man. I had the privilege of meeting him. He is a very tall, very big Blackfoot Indian and he is such a neat man. I was just enthralled by his hands. He was actually here at our homestead and enjoyed a meal with us, he and his wife Wendy. and. I was just so amazed at the size of this man's hands. I put my hand up and his hand was like like this much bigger than mine and his fingers were like this wide. I mean, he is just a big, big man and it was just, it was just neat to spend time with him. He's also a big man in spirit and uh, just very unique person. And uh, he got an infection in his hip and they actually removed his one hip to get the infection out of his body and now he needs to heal and then they will put it back. I can't even begin to imagine what that's like. So please keep him in the fam in, in your prayers. And then we also have Stacy and my mountain man and mountain boy are busy working on a project if you could pray for them too. Now, oh, Jill just asked, did the family make it to Charles' gift home? That is Heather and Justin. Um, they and their children left here and it took them over two weeks to get from Idaho to Tennessee. Um, the kids and Heather are staying in Tennessee right now. She is due, I think she said in six days. So they're staying in Tennessee with the family um, and uh, with the pediatrician that birthed two of her other children um, till the baby is born. But um, I do believe that Justin is on his way today to connect with Charles or very soon and they will be moving up there shortly after the baby is born so that is just such guys i hope you guys are seeing all the blessings not just mine and my families but those that we are praying for you know i try to report in and share the amazing good news of what is happening with the people that we are praying for I feel like I have the best seat in the world because so many people ask me for prayers and I see the power of prayers. I see you guys connecting in front of me on here, loving up on each other. You know, I am so proud of our community. I go to other communities and it's just appalling to me to see how people are just so rude and obnoxious to each other. It just hurts my soul. You know, we have people from all walks of life, from all over the country amongst us and we can all just get along. We have such a friendly and amazing group of people and you guys make me so proud and I am so blessed by that. And it's just so amazing to see these prayers being answered and how God is working amongst us. And you know, the Bible says when three or more together, God is present. And you know, I, I feel God's presence every day of my life in one way or another. And I hope you guys are starting to feel it too. And I certainly hope you feel it as you are embracing the fact that you are going to be who you were called to be because you are beautifully and wonderfully made. But how about that devotional, guys? That is pretty powerful, to say the least. You know, and there's so many situations where we see that happening. So please keep these people in, in your prayers. Um, you know, it's hard to remember. We have a long list. I, I modified it today so that it was not as cumbersome. Um and remove some of the people that have had answered prayers and are doing much better but we are constantly contacted and it's hard to pray over all of them but if you pray over the list you know god knows who they are he knows their needs you know i don't mention everybody's needs because not everybody's needs have been shared with me and some people have shared directly with me but they want it to be kept personal and the whole world not to know. But the thing is, God knows. So if you have prayers and need prayers or know somebody in need of prayer or need somebody to talk to, please reach out. I feel like that is my job and like that's part of my ministry as to what God is doing in my life. So I truly mean that. Do not hesitate. Many of you can attest to that. You know, I am, I am here for you and, and we as a whole would be honored to pray for you and your needs. And if it's something you don't want to share, just say you need prayers. That's all you need to say. Now I want to show you something. And Shelly, 
I could see you getting excited about this because it's really, really cool software. Um, I'm going to actually use the actual live program here. It's called Workflowy. Down below, you will find the links to the applications that I use. I use several for different things, but they're very easy to utilize, and I am constantly in an effort to make things smooth and easy. When it's complicated, it's, I, I can't use it. And I was using Google Keep, and I was finding it very difficult to be able to do my daily scheduling and to keep up with all the different businesses and the different business needs. And last night, I've been, like I said, I was cleaning off the equipment, and I found that I needed, through organizing, I remembered another app. And I knew what I needed Google Keep to do, but it wasn't doing it, and I realized that this other application was doing it. So I'm gonna show you something. Oh, and excuse me, but I'm just, my abs are sore. Okay, this is what, ooh, hopefully you can see that, yes. Okay, this is what Google Keep looks like, or I'm sorry, Workflowy. And there's a link for it down below. It is a bullet list. Now, I can minus that and all of that goes away, or I can use the plus sign over here and open it up. All right, now you can see my master lists right here. Those are all master lists of things that I need to do for each of those individual things. So when I'm creating my schedule for the week, I will open these up. I'll just pick one of these here. I opened the master list for the video so you can see them there you can see that this one here was done so it's marked off the other thing is you can move them along so if I decide to take something um, from here I can copy it put it in my daily to do and then mark it off of my master list so I am keeping things very organized and keeping very up on what I'm doing now I'm going to show you today's Okay, just as an example, I needed to, where's my finger? I needed to call Jim this morning, which is right here. And when you take it and swipe it, it puts a line through it. So I know I've done it. And then um, you can move these things around. But on my, on my weekly schedule, you can see I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All in a row. And I have a template so I can easily duplicate my weekly schedule so that all that's in there and then I can just slide things around to where I need them to get them done. I can move them from day to day if I did not get them done. And, oh, it's backwards. Ah, that is really funny. All right, so then I'll do another video on this. Check out Workflowy. It's a free program. Um, use my link below. I will get 250 free bullets. Um, it looks like I'm going to need them because this is like my new toy. But um, this has made life so much easier for me already. This is what's going to save me an hour a day. Because it's all right in front of me. Even though it's backwards, I'm going to try to show you anyway. I can open these lists and they're all right in front of me. Where in Google Keep, I had to keep going out of one and into the other. And you couldn't copy and drag. It was just such a pain. And it just wasn't working for me. And Evernote, doing it in Evernote makes it hard to search in Evernote because then I have all my daily to-dos in there and it, it takes away from all my notes. Where this, I can do so much easier. So, maybe I'll do a video on this, you know, a screencasting on it and show you guys how to use it. But I encourage you to check it out. The reason I said Shelly might like it is because she could put her list of Christmas items in there and who she's making for what and then easily swipe them off as she's done with them. But you can also recalibrate that same list for the following year and add to it. So it's just pretty cool. It makes life so much easier because you can easily process what you need to, duplicate what you need to, and just flow. And I think that's why it's called Workflowy. It's just such an easy flowing process. And if you're trying to get organized and keep track of a lot of things, your family, your events for the summer, it makes it really nice to do this. Um, so check it out and see there's a lot of how to's on it on YouTube. YouTube can be a really good friend on teaching you how to use any of the applications that are out there because there's always somebody doing a video on them. But um, Evernote is a great notes um, application, but this is really good for a f something that requires a good flow and easy maneuverability and to be able to see everything in one place. So anyway, so what have you learned today and what are you going to work on? I really am wanting to see everybody 
not be afraid of change and to, to embrace a life of being who you are and to get rid of the abundance. We have, my, my abundance is my joy, my happiness, and my family, and the miracles that God shows me every day, and you guys. So, you know, when abundance is overwhelming and it's clutter, it's not a positive abundance. I want you to seek a positive abundance. So, I hope you guys are going to, you know, embrace this and really make a conscious effort to work on changing your lives for the better. Okay, Diana says, overwhelmed by abundance. That has hit me today. It's just, I can't express it. You guys are going to see more and more of this as things progress. Having a garage sale in a few weeks, still decluttering. Awesome. Awesome. And that's another thing you guys can do right now. Good grief. I didn't even think to mention that. You know, I said about going to them, but that's a great way to very quickly get rid of your stuff is to, to do that. And you know, giving things, I will say this, this is something funny. This is something very worth mentioning. You know, we, we gifted a lot. Um, Heather and Justin that moved south to Charles's place, we gifted them a lot of things when they lost from the fire, and one of which was Austin's bed. It was a small antique bed that was mine on the farm, and it had a new mattress on it back then, so it's like an eight-year mattress, nine-year mattress. Um, but it's cute, and their, their daughter needed a bed, so I gave up Austin's bed. It was a single, and he's like Sasquatch, so he's gotten used to sleeping on a queen-size bed in his camper, and that's what he wanted. Well, with him moving back, um, a couple weeks back, before the thought of moving back was there, uh, he was offered a couch. So he went to get the couch, but when he was getting the couch, it's a sleeper couch too, by the way, and brand new. He was also given a dresser and a queen size bed. And um, it's just funny how when we declutter and we gift people and we give to those in need, when our needs are, when we have a need, they will be filled. I've seen that happen over and over again. God does bless. And I want to encourage you guys to remember that, you know, that if you know people are in need of the things you have that you don't want, gifting them is a great way. If you don't have time to sell them or yard sale and that's something you're not interested in, you know, gifting to people that need them, taking them to the churches instead of to a, a, a thrift store. You know, there's a thrift store in our town. I try to take it there because it uh, promotes um, the uh, shelter, animal shelter. It helps to fund the animal shelter in town. Um, but I also take things to the church. So there's great ways to gift people in need. Um, the other thing you could do is homeless shelters. If you guys are going through your clothing, what a great way to gift somebody in need is to take all your clothes there that they might be able to utilize them. Because I'm sure most of them have areas like that or there's a special area that they would recommend you to take them to, even a church. But there's great things that we can do in that regard. Diana says, as soon as the heat isn't so unbearable, I'll be having one too. Awesome. With our location, it was hard to have one. If you recall, last year I did do the one, and that was out um, a couple miles from our place. We loaded everything on our trailer and took everything out and had it out there. It's actually over the 4th of July, now that I, I remember that. Um, but yeah, great ways to declutter and downsize, and it can make it really fast and easy. Um, a truckload to the church or the thrift store out of your house uh, gives you so much more space. Uh, I'm trying to see what Kelly wrote and it's not letting me. It's fighting. Darn thing. We have a local thrift that only asks for a donation but not required. That's what we've done for years. Even donated. That's the part I can't see. Ah. It's fighting with, oh, there. Even donated excess eggs, they were thrilled. Oh, I'm sure. And, you know, that's the thing that we can do um, to help other people. You know, sometimes we're in situations where getting rid of our abundance may not make a, a difference other than just getting rid of a uh, clearing space in our home, that we don't have a need for um, 
as much as somebody else does. So being able to just gift the things versus selling them. Um, we did a little bit of all of that. There were big things that I needed to sell and then it was just such a great joy to be able to give things away. And um, through the church, you know, I had a lot of um, kids craft things from when my kids were little that I had hung on to because Austin was still 13 when we moved here and school projects and all that stuff. So, you know, there's many different ways that we can gift and, and gift ourselves at the same time. So keep that in mind and I really want, want to encourage you guys to focus on that because, man, I just feel like a whole new person. I, I just feel like I've been placed in a whole new environment. And I'm just so thankful for that peace that uh, has been gained as a result of that. And I want you guys there. And I want you guys to consider the fact that we don't have to fit into a cookie cutter or into a mold like the rest of the world. Um, there's so much out there that we're missing and I'd rather see you enjoy it now than when you go to retire and you're unable. So just think about all the things that we talked about today and uh, also use the things you have. Don't save them for special occasions because those occasions may never come. And we miss out on, on getting the joy of using those things while we're here. So I'm going to say a prayer for us all. Papa, I just thank you for this beautiful day, for these beautiful people, and for the way that you provide me with the right words and you gift me in the abilities that I have. And just thank you for making our lives so different and putting that fire there and lighting that fire to share with the world what we are experiencing and what we are learning and the benefits. And I just encourage everyone to just embrace who they are. Lord, give them the strength to be who they are and not be afraid of that. To not worry what other people think. To not worry about fitting into the, what the society considers normal. And to be who they are. To be able to get to that place where they can hear your still small voice. And that they can feel the comforts and peace and joy in their homes and in their lives as a result of changing their focus and, and removing the abundance and the, the fears they have in their life and to just step firmly and strongly forward in their lives and be happy with who they are. And I just ask that you be with everyone on the prayer list. I ask that you please specifically be with Mark this week as he goes through such a grueling surgery. And I ask that you be with Pat as he's going through this chemo this week and just be with everyone on our prayer list. Everyone is so precious and they have such precious needs. And I just ask that you give them comfort and peace in their circumstances. Help them. Help them to shine. Help them to see and feel your presence in their day-to-day -day life. And may they be a light to somebody else. We never know who we're touching. And we never know who is watching. And we need to be willing to walk the walk and talk the talk. And to shine, to shine brighter than the rest of the world. And that just means being who we are and who we were made to be. And I thank you for all that you're going to do in each of our lives. And thank you for always being present. We ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys. I think I need to get out of this position. But it was a pleasure, as always, spending time with you. I love you all. I wish you all a good day. And if you have problems progressing in your decluttering, please reach out to me because I would love to put something together to help people to be able to progress through the process of overwhelm that comes from decluttering and to give you ideas to keep going. You're not alone. You heard so many others here are in the same process. It's cumbersome. It's overwhelming. But the more you work at it and the more you go, the more peace you will find. So I love you all. I thank you. I wish you all a wonderful rest of your day and rest of your week. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. God bless.